church with mission at heart. As you drop your monies into this pan, I want you to think about the, the African children that are without water. Over in the third countries in Chile and the Congo. We support these areas. You know, so, and I know that a dollar goes a long way over there, but sometimes we can give a little bit more than a dollar. Amen. Let's just be a blessing. Because we know truly that the word of God says, if you give, or if you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. Hallelujah. And He promised that He would repay. He's going to repay. A lot of times we want it in dollars and cents, but guess what? Each time that breath is dispatched to you, you've been repaid. Amen. It's time you can get up out of the bed and put your own shoes on. Hallelujah. It's been repaid. Hallelujah. Every time you can walk by yourself, you're being repaid. Thank you, Jesus. We got to see the big picture in this thing. It's not all about, you know, us either. It's not all about us all the time. It's about spreading this love across this world. Hallelujah. And that's what we do when we lift up our mission off. Amen. 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 Uh, at this time, we're gonna we're gonna have our pastor come. Amen. We're gonna ask that you stand to your feet as you receive our superintendent, Torrance Anthony Barnes. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord this morning. Let's celebrate the Lord. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's greet one another today. I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of our King. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Oh, I love you. Continually 
be in my I'm going to bless the Lord. In the midst of everything that's happening, I'm going to bless the Lord. See, you have to make up in your mind before anything happens that I'm going to bless the Lord. I'm going to bless Him because He's God. Oh, y'all don't hear me. He's God. See, my circumstance does not change who He is. It is He that has made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of His pasture. So I'm going to enter His gates with thanksgiving. It's called with praise and I'm going to bless Him.
telling you, he said his name is above every name. Hallelujah. So his name is above cancer. Secretary's office of the Church of God in Christ. You know, there are people who God have raised up who, you know, they're not in the profile. They're not in everybody's book. Amen. They're not in pictures, not everywhere, but they're doing a great work for the Lord. And she's here with us this morning to minister. Let the Lord, I ask her to come to whatever the Lord has given us is for us. Amen. And she so kindly acquiesced and says that she would come. She's leaving on later on this evening. After they celebrate for Bishop Moody uh, at the four o'clock service, but she's here. We thank God. I didn't want her to come this way, not have her come and be a part of the uh, worship service here. Just before she comes, I thank God for the daughter of Bishop Moody is here, and she is a supervisor in the Church of God. Supervisor Superior Kay. She's here with us today, and I would not. I would not. Because before the speaker comes, I would just love to have her to say a word of greetings, greet us here, we thank God for her, and she has worked so faithfully in the mission department also, uh, along with Bishop Rudy as his, his executive secretary, oh, over 30 years, is that 37 years, is that right, in the mission department, and she's just, uh, uh, she is a sweet person, just wonderful, you know, you wouldn't even know who she was if she didn't tell you. You know, there's some people, they always have to have an ear about themselves. You know, you, we, before you come in their presence, they already have told you who they are. But there's some, there's some people who know who they are. Because they know whose they are. So they don't have to put on an ear. All they got to do is keep on serving the Lord. And we're privileged to have her supervisor came with us today. I would that you would just uh, greet her as she comes and have a word. Come on, clap your hands. Let her feel a warm welcome. She was raised up here in North Chicago. Amen. We want to know she's always welcome. Come on, clap your hands and receive her. Give me honor to God. Who is the head of my life? 
It is so wonderful to be here once again, giving honor to Pastor First Lady, um, to my brother, I should say. That's right, okay. <laughs> uh, then that means it's good to be home again. It's been a long time, and this is my second time, and I was telling Evangelist Irons, she says, well, you know this church. I said, no, the, the St. James Temple, I knew is on the other side of the temp- uh, city if it's still up. Uh-huh. If it's still up, so I'm going to take a bite there on the way home. But it's so good. I bring you greetings from Western Canada, and I also bring you greetings from Citadel of Deliverance, which is in Memphis, Tennessee, and my pastor is Elder Linwood Dillard, who is our youth president. Right. Yes. <laughs> but it's so good to be here. It's an honor, a privilege to be before you this morning and um, to be with my friend. We've been friends for over 31 years. And uh, it, it, it feels good and to go with your friend and to listen to her minister to others. And I was telling my father on yesterday, he... He was like, she going to do what? I said, oh, daddy, she, she really has a good ministry when it comes to young people. And when she was talking to him and telling him different things. And, and my chest was just sticking out because I was like, that's my friend. That's my friend. Well, today my, my chest again is sticking out because I know she's going to bring a mighty word to you from the Lord. You all be blessed. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and bless the Lord. At this time, I want you to stand and warmly receive the advantage of this Barakias Irons of Memphis, Tennessee. She will go as the Lord leads her. Let us hear what thus saith the Lord through the woman of the Lord. Clap your hands and receive a good big welcome here. As you remain standing on your feet, I just hear the word of the Lord. I heard Pastor say it. I don't... I, I, I think he said, y'all didn't get it, y'all didn't get it. He said, but his name is here. Yeah. And I said, what a show! How can I go in? See, I never saw. He's behind me, oh, she, oh, no. I'm like, oh, oh. The book says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run in and they are saved. Not only are you saved, but you're saved. You're delivered. You're covered. Hallelujah. When his name is in the place, we don't, it don't take a whole lot of stuff. All you got to do is call him. The Bible tells us whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. See, what happens is we want to call Pastor Barker and Native Barker when we got a problem. But I ain't got nothing to do about cancer. They can't do nothing about diabetes. They can't do nothing about hypertension. Hallelujah. Because when you call them and tell them, they going to just say, let's pray. So I mean, you done got seven numbers too many. When all you have to do is say, Jesus. Hallelujah. All you got to do is call on the name of the Lord. And when I heard him say that, I said, I don't know if he's there somewhere. But his name is here. And his name is here with the Father, we thank you because you make your residence here. This is your house. This is the house of God. And wherever your house is, God, you make your residence there. Your tabernacle in this place. You're staying here. God, this is your holy temple. And because you're here, everything we need, we can get it from you. And so we've come into this house today, Lord, to receive from you, receive bread of life, to receive the water of life, to receive strength to go home. And God, we thank you now for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for what you already have done, God, and what you're going to do. Thank you for your delivering grace. In the name of Jesus, do what you will among us. In the name of Jesus, have your way now, God. Have your own way. By the hand of the devil, we come against all of his works. In the name of Jesus, we curse wandering minds and thoughts that are far off. Draw the minds of the people in to hear with us, said the Lord. Oh, God, speak to our hearts. In the name of Jesus, and help us to do what you called us to do. Bless this man and woman of God who have been set in this place to do this work in this vineyard. Continue to anoint them with the power of the Holy Ghost and then with a mighty burning fire. Send all the help and all the strength that they need. Send the resources, the money, the income, the people to do the work that you've called them to do. And we thank you for it now. And it is so and so it is. In Jesus' name, head up your leaning heart, clap your hands now and begin to praise him because he's most present. He's most here. We appreciate that. You can take your seats. In the house of the Lord. What a delight to be here and enjoy it to a place that I have been before. But I thank God for an opportunity whenever he opens the door. I told somebody I like ministering and sharing the word of God more than I like eating. 
and most of you can tell I don't have a problem with eating. I'm trying to get past that issue, but hallelujah to the Lamb. And I thank God for the Word, because it's through the Word we get life and strength. You have to study this Word. We, we spend a lot, we read a lot of stuff, but we don't read nothing on it no more. And we do everything via the internet and our cell phone. But we look at a lot of information, we receive a lot of information. And absolutely, most of the time, we go to the Bible as our last resort. We'll say, we'll do everything. So, well, I guess I can't do nothing but pray. I can't do anything but find a word. But that's the first thing we should do. And so I absolutely love the Bible. And I, I believe this is the people of, who love the word. I noticed I saw Sunday school books and Bibles that look worn from reading. And not just from being in the back of your car with the sun and hit it. But there's a big difference. There's a big difference. That's a blessing to hear. I'm going to respect to your fine pastor, Pastor Thomas Markham. I did not know your real name was Anthony. My son's real name is Anthony. So happy to uh, see him. And I watched him, watched him grow in ministry, just working in the National Church. I told somebody, we're all, we're not old, we're just maturing. And, uh, we're just, but we're growing up in God and we're growing up in ministry. And he's doing, as he said, not having to be visible, but people know his work. Uh, they know his name in the church. Not because of the late dad, Markham, but because of his reputation, which is a good one. Uh, yeah. So yeah, maybe I'll need to get off the front porch. A whole lot of preachers got a reputation that ain't got nothing to do with being good. Uh, a good name is to be desired. And I'm trying his name, and his church has a good name. And I say that because I have worked, as he said, for Bishop Moody. Actually completed our voice mission for convocation. Been doing that for over 10 to 15 years as the executive editor, well, the managing editor of that periodical for the bishop, and uh, all those years in missions and in general secretary's office, and uh, two years in office of the presiding bishop. Now, <coughs> I serve as manuscript supervisor of the Church of God in Christ Publishing House, and if you open your Sunday school book, you'll see my name, Barry Childs Irons, as a manuscript supervisor, and I've known of Mark. I'm just watching. You don't know who's watching you. You don't know who's watching you. You never see him out with nobody. His wife is there, his wife, but you don't see him with no other chicks. You don't see him out. I'm just I'm, 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 I'm not here to hear about the market, no, but I'm just saying, because sometimes people, sometimes people take for granted the individual that they have among them. I just like to say that, because I've seen a lot of stuff as in ministry. You don't see a lot of different people running around and him hanging up upon the people and hanging around with different people. That's a blessing. To, to see that kind of ministry yet yeah, going for this lovely wife who's always so pleasant, but ever since she always says, we should just smile at that. I love it. I love it. A lot of mean towards ladies in this world. I'm just talking. I feel really hard. I feel really hard. So you all, you all pray for me. What will happen for the young people? Y'all dance me this morning. Love young people. I just love them. They uh, sang a couple songs. All of a sudden, they sang I knew. And I just love young people. We used to, Mother King and I actually used to work youth ministry at our church. We worked under the late old Daisy Hall Jr. She was youth minister, and I worked with the purity class. I just love young people. Dude, you were getting them drunk. Dude, I play drums. So. I can keep it straight through your testimony, sir. You know, traveling, she, Lord, I can do that. I was killing them. I was impressed. So, thank God for these fine young people. Let's get into the word of the Lord. Do I respect the Shemudi? We are going back to celebrate with him. He's been such an influence in my life, and I thank God for him and his life. And I want to share something. The Lord put this in my spirit when the pastor asked me Friday night, and I want to share, if you will, I'm not the one who's going to read the word, but I'd like to kind of give you a little preface before I get to it. The Lord put a word in my heart some time ago, and he'll just do this stuff. He'll give me a word, and then that'll be it. And then you just got to walk around and see what you're trying to say. Then he'll finally give you some scripture to tell you what he wants to take you. So he gave me a word, and he said, certain. And most of us live our life Knowing that we'll say ain't nothing certain in this world except death and taxes. We know we're going to die and we know we got to pay the government. And then some folks say, you know, ain't nothing certain other than me being back. Whatever, you know, for sure what that works. But in our mind, estimate, most, there's not a lot of things that we can say there's certainty of. There was no way in the world we would know gas would ever be $4 a gallon. When we first started driving, you had gas that was 75 cents or 50 cents or a dollar and a quarter. When gas first went to $2, I like to have lost my mind. I mean, you just wrong. And so you were certain that it would stay there. And your brain 
but you realize nothing like that was going to stay there because once they cross that line, the government can do what, has, what they wanted to. So most of us have been taught as believers that there's nothing certain in life. And even the scripture tells us, and James tells us, for that she ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. So we live day by day knowing that at any moment anything can occur. Ask people in New York with 911. Ask terrorist attack. And they've gotten it so bad now. I told somebody we've become prisoners in our own country. They created, they could commit an act of terror, but they've petrified us and made us seal ourselves in from what's going on in the world. But I know in my Bible that he who is with me is with me no matter what. I don't worry about the enemy. The devil gonna come. That's his job. The thing you can say about the devil is that he's persistent. Now you don't like me. That's about him. But you can say this much: he persistent. He gonna do what he gonna do, whether you want him to do it or not. He don't care how much you dance. You can run around the church fifty-five times. You can jump, spin on your head, do the blues, brother. But when you finish, he coming back again. 